Many years ago, there was a certain priest who lay dying. Other priests knelt praying around his bed, and the dying priest would from time to time join his voice to theirs. But the priest around the bed, thinking that speaking so much would hasten the moment of death, they urged the dying priest to remain quiet and not to say so many aspirations. And the father responded, what does it matter if I die a few hours sooner when there is question of gaining merit for eternity? And he continued, every moment is precious to me and I do not wish to lose even one. Let me therefore pray as long as I am able to speak. The pain which this priest endured was such that in order to encourage himself to bear it patiently and to merit by it, he ordered the window in his room to be opened so that he could look up to heaven. And he, would, he was heard to say, oh, how easy it is to suffer these terrible pains when I keep my eyes fixed on heaven. Oh, paradise, soon, very soon, I hope to be there and to be there forever. My dear faithful, it is because we forget to look up to heaven that we forget what life is all about. It's because we focus so much on material things that we forget every single moment is precious. St. Alphonsus, remember, he said that time is worth what God is worth. For depending on how we use our time, we either gain or lose God for all eternity. Every moment brings with it an opportunity of merit. And at each moment, our Heavenly Father seems to dare us to come closer to Him. He challenges us to go out of our comfort zone and, as we said a few weeks ago, to launch out into the deep. Now, no, we Catholics, we all of us want to be good Catholics. We want to become holy, or at least we want to be free from mortal sin and faithful to God's holy law. But that's not enough. God challenges us to go even farther than this. He wants more. In one gospel, our Lord said, be ye perfect, even as your heavenly Father is perfect. That is what this life is all about. Each and every soul is created by God to seek after spiritual perfection, holiness, and nothing short of this. Those words, be ye perfect. It is written, did you know this? In the imperative case, the commanding case, or commanding voice, as you will, and therefore it is a command of God that we should be perfect. Not perfect in this sense that, oh, we never have our moments of weakness and impatience and uh, such things as that, that we never make a mistake in life. No, that's not the kind of perfection we're talking about. But perfection in this sense that we are in the state of sanctifying grace and that we constantly seek to do God's holy will and to fulfill it with love of God. But further proof that God wants us to strive for perfection is found in the very fact that he created purgatory. Purgatory only exists to finish or accomplish this complete purification of those souls who didn't accomplish it while they were yet on earth. For nothing defiled 
can enter heaven. What is it then? Why is it that so many souls do not reach this degree of holiness that God has marked out from all eternity for you to strive for? I could go through a whole long laundry list of obstacles, but really it can all be summed up in this one thing. We don't will it. We don't want it badly enough. Someone once asked St. Thomas Aquinas, what must I do to become holy? His answer was simple and to the point. Will it. This desire for holiness is the very first and indispensable condition for attaining holiness. Without a desire, you will not accomplish it. The road to holiness, yes, it is arduous, it is difficult at some, some points, and yes, it implies constant and energetic efforts. In other words, it requires sacrifice. And no one ever enters upon a steep, rugged path unless first he possess an ardent desire of arriving at his goal. And were he to set out on a path without this desire, he'd soon abandon it. And so also, no one ever, no one starts on the path of holiness or perseveres in it unless first he is sustained by a strong desire to reach the end. This is how the saints did it, even the most timid of the saints. This is how they attained such heights of holiness. It is first and foremost because they wanted it. I mean, they didn't just wish for it. With all of their heart and soul, they wanted it. They did whatever it took to attain that holiness. You can often see motivational <coughs> videos of famous athletes, the ones that were truly successful, and they all tell you the same thing. You've got to be hungry. Nothing will get in the way that you will not overcome. Or businessmen, they say the same thing. You have to want it, and that goal has to always be in front of you. And so it is in the lives of the saints. And so it should be for you and for me. The saints could not rest until they found holiness. For them, those words of St. Augustine were so true. Our hearts are restless, Lord, until they rest in thee. A lack of peace of heart often comes, not always, but often comes from the very fact that your heart is seeking God, it wants it. Yet you choose not to follow those desires. <coughs> the lives of the saints show us that without frequently renewing this desire for holiness, we will not reach a true spiritual perfection. St. Teresa of Avila said we should not stifle our desires. That's what too often happens, though. And she continues, this is highly important. Let us firmly believe that with the divine help and our own efforts, we can in the course of time obtain what so many saints, aided by God, finally attained. Had they never conceived such desires, had they not little by little carried them into execution, they would never have risen so high. Oh, how important it is in the spiritual life to rouse oneself to great things. What are the means to stimulate this desire for perfection or holiness? First, it is chiefly through meditation and prayer to consider 
to deeply consider, not just superficially, the value of your soul, which was purchased by the blood of the God-man. Consider the life of sanctifying grace in your soul. Are you at this moment in the state of sanctifying grace? Because that's all that matters. We should consider the delights which God has in store for the faithful soul in heaven. We should consider that each degree of perfection, of merit, that we attain in this life brings with it, as theologians say, a corresponding degree of glory in heaven. Secondly, we should frequent the sacraments. I think many a Catholic takes the reception of the sacraments too lightly, but it is through the sacraments that we will, we will go to great, great heights of holiness. Parents, make it a point to bring your children to Mass, even more than just on Sundays, so that they receive the body and blood of Christ, so that they can go to confession and there receive the strength to avoid sin. The third means to stimulate these desires is by means of providential trials. Now, I keep mentioning things from the last two years, but all that happened during that time was a series of providential trials. For you and for me, for every single one of us, we all of us suffered, to some extent or another, through those years. But through providential trials often come many interior graces that urge us on towards a more perfect life. If nothing else came out of the last two years, it should be this, that you have learned that there is nothing here on earth, and to set your heart on heaven. And the fourth and the final means that I will mention today to stimulate this desire is, of course, prayer, constant prayer. <coughs> even when you do not feel like praying, even if you feel that you don't mean what you are saying to God, say that prayer anyway, because it can only do good for you, and it will only increase your desire for heaven. Now, to conclude, there are three classes of souls in this world. There are the ones, like the Pharisee in today's Gospel, who think that they are too holy to, go, to become any more holy. Then there are those who are so lowly, so discouraged, <coughs> that they think they can't go any higher. But then finally, there, is the soul, there are the souls like the publican in today's gospel, who recognizing all of his weaknesses, sins and shortcomings, turns his face to God and says, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And our Lord said, this man went home justified. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat>